Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics. In this video, I'd like to talk about a particular part of the Conservative Party manifesto that has taken a decidedly sinister turn after some people on the interwebs spotted a link to a rather unfortunate influence. Of course, it may not be unfortunate. It may be self-aware. But first, if you'd like to see more of my videos, then please click the subscribe button and then the bell notification icon next to it. So when you consider the Conservative Party manifesto, it is not so much about getting Brexit done, which it absolutely cannot, but about getting Britain broken, which is a much more truthful soundbite for his intention, so I thought I'd change it for him. So to begin with, I need to explain what is the problem with page 48 of the manifesto, and then explain why, if this isn't a coincidence, it does show a terrifying self-awareness from the very people who are trying to sell out both the United Kingdom as a country and its people in the next few weeks. So the offending page essentially removes the power of Parliament from a number of areas and places more executive powers in the hands of the government. This is intended to empower a future Conservative Prime Minister should they ever find themselves again in the position that Boris Johnson did, in other words being Prime Minister, but without enough MPs behind them to do exactly what they say. As a little extra, they're also attempting to nullify the courts as well. Naturally, each of the measures they are proposing is billed as making the system fairer and better, but in actual fact, just puts more power in the hands of fewer people and takes it away from the rest of us. Remember all that rubbish about Brexit being about giving more power to Parliament and our courts? Yeah, this manifesto will do the opposite, actively ripping that power away. They spend a whole page saying how brilliant it's going to be to remove that sovereign power. It is the trajectory of dictatorship. And for those that think this couldn't happen to our country, much the same may have thought of another European democracy 90 years ago. But more of that later. So the first order of business on this page is removing the Fixed Terms Parliament Act. So the manifesto claims that it has caused paralysis in the country. Not so. Johnson's refusal and Theresa May's before him to respect the democratic will of Parliament when they themselves did not have a majority did that. Without the Fixed Terms Parliament Act, we would currently be out of the EU without a deal. And in fact, if Boris Johnson hadn't thrown a wobbly and withdrawn his own EU withdrawal bill, it actually could have passed through by now and we could have arranged for Brexit. Now, he's the one who's caused paralysis, not Parliament. Boris Johnson wants the power that Prime Ministers used to have, in the not too distant past as well, to call a general election whenever they want, which means dissolving Parliament for weeks at a time, at a time of their choosing. But it will be difficult to explain to most people how monstrous this would be in the hands of someone like Johnson, because, well, a couple of things. First of all, that power did exist 10 years ago, and... People thought, well, it was all right then. We didn't have anyone complaining then. But we haven't before had a prime minister abuse that power to the same extent that he wanted to. So people haven't really seen the abuse it could do firsthand. In the past, a prime minister calling a general election has it's generally been about choosing a time when they would win the maximum number of seats. You could argue that that's abuse enough. But at least it has never been used to prevent Parliament stopping a deranged Prime Minister from forcing a massive constitutional change against the will of Parliament. The second point is that they're going to be moving boundaries around. Now, of course, we knew they were going to be doing this. This didn't take a lot of predicting. They say this is going to make it more democratic. No, no, it's not. They'll be moving them to prevent as many marginals between themselves and other parties as possible. They will rewrite the constituency boundaries to produce lots of reliable Conservative seats, minimising the number of marginal areas they'd have to contest. Then, with that smaller number of marginals, they'll hit them with promises of major investments and create a one-party system. It's bad enough that Labour hardly ever dislodged the Conservatives from power thanks to a number of factors, but not least of which is the refusal to use proportional representation. But the Conservatives will create a system which is much less democratic than what we have even now. In fact, their third point is to double down on that and to make a point of sticking with the first-past-the-post system. That's what they say. We are going to stick with the first-past-the-post system. Now ask yourself this. Why put that in the manifesto? Why put in your manifesto a promise not to change something? A manifesto is all about what you will change, what will be different if you vote for them. Why talk about something that isn't going to be changed? 
I think it's because they do fear a hung parliament or at least a very small majority. And they want to try and prevent potential rebel Conservative MPs, some people with a conscience, from actively supporting a different electoral system by saying that, well, you can't do that because you'd be going against our manifesto promise. You stood on that manifesto. They also make a promise to introduce identification to vote. Again, they'd announced this some time ago. I've talked about in the past how this disproportionately hits the poorest. This page 48 is all about forcing a situation whereby if the people vote for a Conservative government this time, it will be forever. It's a bit like not being allowed another say on Brexit. You know, they're allowed as many says as they like. Boris Johnson said no to it twice and then yes to it once and then no to it again when it was his own bloody deal. Um, we're not allowed another say. Oh, no, 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 no. And, and I used to say at the time to people saying that, well, that's quite right. How ridiculous would it be if the politician said that we couldn't have another say on the government? If we were never allowed another general election, you'd be up in arms, wouldn't you? Of course you would. Well, these proposals pretty much do just that. One good general election for Boris Johnson next month, or this month, sorry, next week. And he may not need to face another again. And the next point actually sounds quite good. They promise to abolish the 15 year rule and allow British citizens abroad the ability to vote. Can't complain about that, Phil. Weren't you saying yesterday how awful that rule is? Yes, I was. And another thing I was saying in that video is how the Conservatives promise this every time and then don't deliver. And in fact, in the last Parliament, it was even the Conservatives who blocked it when it was being brought before Parliament. So, yes. Um, the next point is another, not changing anything. Again, they're emphasising that they won't change the voting age from 18. Again, ask yourself, why are they putting in their manifesto a promise to not change something? See the previous answer, I guess. They'll also say that they'll champion freedom of expression. Ooh, sounds fancy, but what does it actually mean? It means that they'll change the law so you can be as racist, sexist, or homophobic as you like, and nobody can touch you for it. It also means you can lie about political opponents and deceive voters with fake sites, and you'll be fine, no problem at all. And they are specific in saying that they will repeal what little legislation we have aimed to stop the press completely taking the piss with blatant political lies. They say that they will improve the use of data in the process of government. Translation. They will collect all manner of data on us and use it against us. Uh, so not only will there be no safeguards against our data being manipulated against us by social media, they're going to get in on the act big time. Big time. They then have a third column on the page talking at length about, well, as length as you ever do in a manifesto, uh, about sweeping changes to the Constitution. As if ripping us away from the EU were not damaging enough to our constitutional arrangements. No, they want to go much, much further. They talk in general terms, so they're not giving specifics, in general terms about changing the role of Parliament, the monarch, the courts. In fact, every institution that can currently hold the government to account is going to lose that power. This is truly terrifying. If people vote this monster a majority, the UK will literally cease to exist. The Prime Minister will not have checks and balances. They will have more power than the President does in the United States. They will be able to pretty much do whatever they want. It, it actually talks about ministers being able to rewrite laws as and when. They sort of bill it as, oh, sometimes there's a little fiddly thing in the laws that no one really realised. Oh, isn't, isn't it tiresome getting Parliament to change it? Tell you what, we'll just do it on our, on our own. No need to bother Parliament with it, we'll do it. They'll be able to write laws at will. That's what that's about. It completely removes Parliament's role. And, and we all know what that means. When you've got a leader of government but no legislature, or they just ad ad adopt the role. What do we call that? You know what we call that. You know, the, the greater fear before this manifesto really was in the union breaking up. You know, Scotland going independent, Northern Ireland reunifying with Ireland, and just being England and Wales left, maybe just England eventually. But no, even what's left will turn into something else entirely, and it will happen quickly. They don't mean to mess about, they mean to get this done very, very quickly. So now onto that chilling link as a last little thing at the start that I mentioned. Page 48, this is on. This is all on page 48. Could be coincidence. But people have been pointing out on the internet yesterday 
that Article 48 of the Weimar Republic of Germany Constitution is the bit that gave the ability to take emergency powers without the consent of the German Parliament at the time. It was pretty vague about what an emergency was as well. And uh, of course, this was used and we know how it was used, or rather abused, by a certain gentleman with a penchant for toothbrush moustaches uh, to turn Germany from a democracy to a dictatorship. And we all know how that ended. But we also know what terrible damage was done before it did end. And as I say, there are, there are people who may think, well, this couldn't possibly happen in Britain. Why not? Why couldn't it? They didn't think it could happen 90 years ago. It did. Why couldn't it happen now when everything is following exactly the same course as it did then? This is truly terrifying. You need to get people out to vote. You need to particularly explain to the young how this may be the first time they're allowed to take part in a general election. If they don't go out and vote, it may be the last time there's any point. It could be that serious. It probably is that serious. In fact, page 48 of the manifesto says that it's that serious. So I hope you found the video interesting as well as chilling. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, then please click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.